The Mark III, more familiarly known as the Fat Man, was our first implosion-type atomic weapon. Its prototype was first tested at Almogordo, New Mexico in 1945. And later, a Mark III was used operationally against the Japanese city of Nagasaki. An improvement of the Mark III, the Mark IV, developed after World War II, was our first atomic weapon to be produced on an assembly line basis and to be stockpiled in large numbers. To give better ballistic accuracy, the shape of the case was changed. Provisions were also made so that the nuclear core of active material could be inserted without complete disassembly of the weapon by the use of a special detachable device. This gave us the capability of in-flight insertion of the active material. The firing system, commonly referred to as the X-unit, and the fusing system were also improved and mounted on a cartridge to facilitate checking and testing. The Mark VI looks almost identical to the Mark IV from which it was developed. But inside the 61 by 128 inch aluminum case, many changes have been made. Below the safing plugs, an easy to remove nose plate permits access to the horn type radar antenna and allows for simpler and quicker in-flight insertion. Redesign of the entrance to the pit, addition of a detonator holding trap door and coring of the high explosive makes it possible to slide the outer and inner cores of HE into a rotatable holder and permits manual IFI to be accomplished in a minimum of time. A single lug at the top of the ballistic case is used to suspend this 8,500 pound weapon from the bomb bay of the delivery aircraft. And extending through the skin are the arming wires that operate the pull-out switches upon release. This easy-to-remove cartridge is the electrical and electronic heart of the weapon. Readily accessible are the batteries, the radars, and barometric switches of the fusing system. The gap tubes and detonator contacts of the X unit are on the face of the cartridge. And inside the weapon is the detonator distribution system, with its loading coils to equalize the electrical paths to the detonators. When the cartridge is inserted in the weapon, pressure contact provides the connection between firing system and the terminals of the detonation system. In contrast with the Mark VI, which requires manual insertion of the nuclear material, the Mark V has a built-in mechanism to perform the insertion of the capsule and the cord high explosive. Thus, by a switch on his in-flight control box, the bomb commander of the delivery aircraft can automatically perform a nuclear insertion or extraction at any time. After the cartridge has been checked and installed, the tail section is attached, completing the assembly of this internally carried weapon. The need for a tactical weapon led to the development of the Mark VII. The two-piece ballistic case that encloses the components of the weapon give it the required streamlining to be carried externally. The Mark 12 weapon, also designed to be carried externally, is even lighter and smaller than the Mark 7. Our above-ground capabilities with the implosion-type weapon are numerous. The Mark 9 artillery-fired atomic projectile is for use in the Army's 280 millimeter gun. Thus, from our little boy and fat man, as new ideas have developed, and as technical hurdles have been surmounted, our family of atomic weapons has grown. 
and will continue to forge ahead to meet the needs of modern warfare.